Good afternoon, uh, distinguished participants. I would like to welcome you to this webinar of the Common Fund for Commodities, uh, dedicated to the current call for proposals of, of the CFC. My name is Andrei Kuleshov. I am a Chief of Strategy and Development at the Common Fund for Commodities. And here with me, I have my colleague, Mr. Nikolaus Krome. Uh, who is the Chief Operations Officer of the CFC. Uh, before we start, uh, I'm going to uh, make some housekeeping announcements. So if uh, there is a technical issue, uh, uh, for whatever reason the broadcast is interrupted, don't worry, uh, you can simply reconnect with the same credentials and uh, the, this conversation will continue. We are making a recording of this uh, session, and this uh, recording will be available on the CFC website. So if you have to disconnect uh, at some point, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, there will be a recording of whatever we say today. Uh, you can always use the chat function uh, to uh, bring anything to the attention of the organizers. Uh, you can also ask questions. And uh, we would like to suggest that uh, Nikolaus and I go through the presentation first, and then we have a Q&A session towards the end of our discussion today. Uh, we noticed that there was a mistake on the Zoom uh, information regarding this meeting. This meeting will take one hour. So we're only going to take one hour. Now, Zoom calendar invite indicated two hours. That was a mistake. Our apologies for that. Uh, finally, a kind request, as probably everybody is aware by now, uh, in the Zoom meeting, uh, everybody is kindly requested to uh, keep the microphone on mute unless you really want to say something. So we can keep the noise level in the virtual meeting room to the minimum. So uh, this concludes uh, the housekeeping announcements that we had. And now we are going to proceed with the substance of our presentation. So first and foremost, what is the Common Fund for Commodities? Uh, since uh, it's not widely known, but uh, we have been in existence for uh, quite some time and we have quite a bit of experience in, in uh, providing finance to developing countries. So the Common Fund for Commodities, it's an intergovernmental uh, financial institution, development finance institution, established in 1989 uh, by over 100 member countries and under the aegis of the United Nations. So uh, we are a, a member and observer in the United Nations Second Committee, and we are recognized as a legitimate international organization by the United Nations. Uh, the CFC only has uh, one office, and that's the headquarters in Amsterdam. Uh, we do not have regional office, offices. Uh, we are very small, only 24 people in the CFC, but we are trying to serve all our 101 member countries. And the CFC also has uh, international organizations, other international organizations as institutional members. And you can see them on the screen. That's European Union, African Union, regional economic communities, and so on. By now, the CFC has uh, 34 years of project experience. We have financed uh, hundreds of projects uh, since 1989. And uh, the total project cost is uh, soon exceeding 800 million. Since 2014, the CFC has turned to become an impact investor. That means that we are providing recoverable finance to projects which can deliver financial return and measurable and identifiable impact on the sustainable development goals within the overall UN SDG framework. 
uh, we have counted 99 countries where at different times we had some project activities. So hopefully this uh, provides you sufficient basic information about the CFC. Now, moving on. Uh, so uh, what were the foundations of the fund? What is the, uh, what is the origin of the fund? Why commodities? Uh, in principle, we uh, often say that commodities are the backbones of developing countries to participate in the global trading system, to benefit from the global trading system. Many developing countries only have commodities as the product that they can usefully supply to the, to the global trading channels and thereby participate in the global economy. So we estimate that commodity dependence uh, is at the root of a poverty for over 2 billion people. And the uh, aim, the ambition of the CFC, the ambition of the member countries in establishing the CFC is to make sure that commodity value chains, the value produced in commodity value chains, goes back to the developing countries, relying on commodities for participation in the global trade, to give them a chance for greater equity and for greater sustainability and for greater economic development. Uh, in uh, line with the recent trends in development, the CFC also prioritizes green recovery, uh, food security, digital development, uh, gender equality, and of course, the CFC welcomes innovation and creativity. We will talk more about it. Uh, an important uh, feature of the CFC is um, uh, its focus on multi-stakeholder collaboration. And the reason for, for this is simple. The commodity value chains connecting developing countries to the global markets typically involve a multitude of participants. And the CFC is trying to target those participants who are the most weak, who are the most poor, who are the most vulnerable in the commodity value chains so that the CFC money can deliver the greatest impact. And that also points you in the direction of the types of projects that the CFC would like to uh, support with its financing. So uh, you have probably had the time to read the vision and mission of the CFC, and we simply aim to uh, contribute to the global efforts to eliminate poverty worldwide. And we do this not by, uh, let's say, by uh, making our financing the driver of our poverty alleviation, but the driver of change in the global commodity value chains, so that the value in the commodity in commodities can be directed towards poverty alleviation and to advancing the economic well-being of people who depend on commodities in our member countries. So, uh, how do we do that? And this is a very uh, uh, high level, uh, top level diagram. And I see that there are some comments in the chat box. Okay, so these are my colleagues. Thank you very much. Uh, this is a very uh, bird's eye view of the type of activities of the picture of CFC operations. On the left side, you see the common fund for commodities. So the common fund for commodities is the, the uh, organization that provides financial resources to impact investing projects that deliver impact. And summarizing our experience, uh, the best type of projects that work in this regard are those driven by small and medium enterprises. And that's why the small and medium enterprises are at the center of this diagram. The small and medium enterprises in the commodity sector in developing countries have multitude of functions. Uh, they provide income, they provide employment, and they provide the essential services to make commodity value chains function. And as uh, the screen mentions, uh, for example, the small and medium enterprises, they can do processing of primary commodities for export needs or for domestic needs or for regional needs. They can do storage to manage the supply of commodities in ways that is beneficial to the producers. They can innovate with products 
they can work on the quality. I think a fair number of projects that we get to see deal with the quality of commodity products. Now, the small and small and medium enterprise, on the one side, they work with the grassroots commodity producers, and that's the arrow go, going below to smallholder farmers. We look for small and medium enterprises that can do sustainable and equitable sourcing, providing the value to the smallholder farmers for the produce that they supply. The CFC can support uh, buying uh, logistics inputs, other aspects of organizing smallholder farmers to supply to the small and medium enterprise. And then it is not the CFC money by itself that generates the value, but it is the high value international markets. That's the arrow going above. So the small and medium enterprises supplying primary commodities to the global market derive or are expected to derive high or higher value for the primary commodity products. And this value goes through the small and medium enterprise back to the smallholder farmers so that the CHC, this whole impact project, can achieve difference for the primary producers and the CFC can achieve its mission by providing the four arrows, the four financial flows going from the CFC to the small and medium enterprise. My colleague uh, will explain this in more detail, but basically you can see on the screen that this is trade finance, this is CapEx loan, this is working capital, and in some cases we can provide quasi-equity financing for the small and medium enterprises that will help them implement certain projects that realize the model of deriving the value from the global high value markets and delivering this value back to the primary producers of commodities. I hope this is a, a fairly a convincing diagram of what the CFC does and why we believe that this is effective. This is an effective way to address the needs of our stakeholders. Now I'm going to move on and uh, we are going to the CFC call for proposals. Uh, since 2014, uh, the Common Fund for Commodities has adopted uh, an open door policy, you can call it. The policy whereby anybody, any organization expecting uh, to uh, implement a project in the member country of the CFC can apply to the Common Fund for Commodities seeking financial support. For this purpose, we have the open call for proposals uh, whereby anybody can apply to the CFC by completing a certain application form. And this is the subject the main subject of today's uh, discussion. So what we're looking for and what is the application process uh, to, uh, to request CFC financing. So uh, all the applications uh, to the CFC and I'm now diving into the details of uh, what, uh, what we need to see on the application form. So all applications must be based in the CFC member countries. Uh, it is not unusual for us to see proposals from a company in, in a non-member country of the CFC. What we ask is that the activities financed by the CFC are only implemented in CFC member countries. That means that all activities outside member countries of the CFC need to be financed by co-financiers or from other sources of finances, uh, financing. Uh, we also ask for audited financial statements of the company uh, for the latest three financial years. So we're basically looking for, uh, for uh, proposals where the proponent can demonstrate that they have a history and a credible background of operating successfully in the sector where uh, where the proposal is made. So whether it's a coffee grower uh, company or a cotton trader company, they simply need to demonstrate that they know what they're doing and th that this can be confirmed by independent review. 
Uh, in general, we say that our focus is on agricultural commodity sector. Uh, there are some uh, exceptions to this, or there have been some exceptions to this, but for the purpose of this, uh, of this webinar, let's assume that we focus on uh, agricultural commodities. Uh, so any agri, uh, small and medium enterprise, or uh, a fund, or even a non-governmental, non-commercial organization can apply if they believe that there is a project proposal that meets the criteria of the CFC. Some examples of the innovations for positive change that we're looking for include uh, climate smart agriculture, renewable energy projects have been on the rise recently, uh, food security has long been on the agenda and unfortunately food security will remain on the agenda for the CFC is one of the important directions where commodity economy needs to develop to serve uh, the poorest people in the world more effectively. Uh, if you are in doubt, uh, simply do ask. And in most cases, we will say if it has to do with commodities, if there is some innovation component, we will say that, uh, that we would like to look at your application form for certain uh, project proposal, investment proposal, rather. Uh, we often uh, receive questions uh, regarding uh, the availability of grant financing. And uh, the answer is that the proposal for investment by the common fund needs to be financially viable. Uh, this means, or this is understood, that uh, the investment proposal needs to be able to continue its operations and its financial viability after the conclusion of the CFC involvement and after the recovery of CFC financing. This means that uh, CFC financing will be recovered and we expect that the operation will remain profitable and that the operation <clears throat> will be able to continue going in the spirit of the sustainable development goals starting with the financial sustainability also we will look at social and environmental sustainability as uh, required by the impact investment framework so again this is in very broad uh, strokes how uh, how uh, project proposals are expected to look and now I'm going to say a few words about the investment process of the CFC, okay? So what happens with the application to the common fund? So once you complete the application form, what are the subsequent steps? It is fairly straightforward. So uh, between now and 1st of October uh, this year, we expect to receive application forms, completed application forms. Uh, those applications form will be read by the CFC project manager. So every application form received by the CFC completed uh, will be read by somebody in the secretariat, by one of our project manager, who will uh, conclude a quick review checklist confirming that the proposal is eligible for the CFC financing and that it meets the basic qualifications. Uh, we uh, get uh, sometimes over a few hundred uh, proposals for investments. So out of those investment uh, proposals, the Secretariat will choose the ones that are most in line with the CFC mandate and priorities, as I was just describing them to you. And this is done by, completed, by completing a quick review checklist that is then discussed in the, in the CFC secretariat by project manager, chief operations officer, the risk manager and other colleagues to decide which of the proposals are most suitable for evaluation by the CFC consultative committee. The consultative committee of the Common Fund for Commodities, and that's the second box, uh, it's a group of independent specialists in the commodity sector. So for example, if you are sending us a project or investment proposal on coffee, Please do expect that if it is uh, detailed and eligible and suitable, 
it will be read and seen by somebody who actually understands coffee and who works in the coffee sector and who may be engaged in the global coffee trades, so knows intimately the coffee markets and everything that goes with it. So those are people, nine members of the consultative committee. They meet uh, twice a year, and all the proposals found suitable for CFC financing will be seen by those nine people, nine members of the consultative committee, uh, who will uh, review it in a face-to-face -face or virtual meeting, and who will make a recommendation to the CFC whether the project is suitable for CFC financing, whether it's recommended. After the recommendation by the consultative committee, if the recommendation is generally positive, uh, requesting some clarifications, we will come back to the project proponents uh, with the key terms and conditions and maybe some questions that, uh, would, that could be raised by the consultative committee. And we will seek replies to those questions and the confirmation that our understanding of the project is sound. And if this is confirmed, we go for final decision to the executive board. Uh, the executive board meets twice a year in April and October each year, and the executive board makes the final decision on allocating CFC financing to provide financial support to investment proposals received through the open call. All this process, as the slide says, takes about six months. So all the project proposals are received by the CFC by 1st of October this year will uh, come to the consultative committee in January uh, 2024 and to the executive board in April 2024. So approximately by second week of April, there will be an answer whether the CFC is prepared to finance an investment proposal received through the open call, this current open call, that will remain open until 1st of October this year. So uh, please do be aware that during the whole process in principle, the CFC can come back to you asking for clarifications, asking for uh, further documentation and everything. So if the proposal is reasonably complete, but we don't understand some finer details, then we will come back to you and we will ask for it. But also do try to send us a complete package. Uh, frequently, we have questions, can you finance this, can you finance that? The answer will always be that we have to see a complete application to be able to process this. In principle, almost anything, as I mentioned before, almost anything that deals with agricultural commodities in development countries is potentially suitable. So, uh, once the executive board has decided to approve CFC financing for a certain investment proposal, uh, we will have to conclude the legal documentation. We will have to uh, go through the process of due diligence, that is verification of the information contained in the, in the application form and clearing up any misunderstandings between us and the investment proponents. Then we draft a contract, then we conclude the contract, and then financing can flow. Uh, the CFC expects that this process will be completed in less than 12 months after the approval by the executive board. It can take time, we know, legal negotiations can take time, but we do expect uh, a, a sufficient commitment from the proponents that the, that the process of concluding the necessary documentation will be done within 12 months. And if it's not done within 24 months, then we might uh, withdraw the CFC commitment to finance certain projects. We've been very careful with that. We always check if there are any issues, uh, if we can help with anything. But in principle, our commitment is valid for 24 months after the approval by the executive board. After that time, we call it the sunset. After that time, we might uh, withdraw the CFC commitments if there's no progress been made. And finally, there were some questions uh, regarding the calendar for the current call for proposals. And I'm happy to show this on the screen. 
So uh, the applications will be received by 1st October. Then up to 30 November, we will be doing the screening of applications. So if we get, let's say, I hope 200 plus applications, then all those applications will be read by investment managers. And we will decide on each and every one of them individually to see if they are suitable for the consultative committee. We have to submit the documents one month in advance of every meeting of the CFC, so one month before the meeting of the consultative committee. Uh, in December 2023, we sent the documents to all nine members of the CFC consultative committee. They will meet face to face in the last week of January 2024. Then we will come back to the proponents with any questions that they raise, and we aim to prepare the documents for the executive board by March 2024. And in April 2024, the executive board will make its final decision. So uh, this concludes uh, the process of considering CFC uh, applications. Uh, now I would like to uh, move on uh, to the application form. And uh, there is some general information on the application form. Uh, that, is, that is the overview of what the application form will consist of. Uh, you can see those uh, headers in the application form. So it's the organization background, uh, describe the organization. We'll go through those, uh, through those elements in uh, detail just in a few moments. So uh, just have a quick look at the structure of the application form. I don't, I don't have to read it. Uh, the application form can be downloaded from the CFC website. So please feel free, free to share the address. Please feel free to share the application form and uh, do be aware of, of a few things. That is, uh, the CAT does not charge any fees uh, for submitting an application. So if anybody asks you for a fee, uh, this is not the CFC. The CFC does not ask for any uh, financial backing for your application form. Uh, we do ask for complete and accurate information. If the application is successful, we will come and check and verify all the application uh, contains in the form. So uh, there is no reason to submit to us forget or misleading information because we'll come back and check. And if we don't understand something, then this will count against the application. And this uh, this will not this will not help to make the application more successful. Uh, clear applications are the easiest to process and they enjoy the highest chance of success. Because of the small size of the CFC secretariat and uh, because of the large number of proposals, we will only be able to uh, correspond with regards to the applications uh, that have been positively reviewed. For the simple reason that we have to focus on those applications that have a chance of successful uh, results with the CFC. So please understand uh, and we count on your understanding that we will only correspond on those uh, successful applications. Uh, please also do have a look at the exclusion list published on the CFC website. And the important thing, if your application uh, needs to contain any confidential information, please indicate this clearly on the application form so we can treat this appropriately and that uh, your confidential information is not disclosed where you don't want it uh, without your consent. So uh, the email address uh, to submit application forms is on the screen. You can also submit, this is a real email address. This is uh, read by a real person. So uh, if you have any questions uh, or if you want to send your application form, please send it to open call at common fund or and we will try to reply and confirm on every email sent to, to this address. So with that, I would like to invite uh, my colleague, uh, Mr. Nicholas Cromer, to continue with the application form. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Andre, and also a good day, good afternoon from myself. Um, we now turn to the proposal in detail. 
uh, and we will walk you through the template as you will find it on our website, chapter by chapter. And we start with chapter one, and that's the organization background, and just to voice over what, what we really want from you there. Under 1.1, one, one, uh, you see that, that we would like to know how your company is registered or where your company is registered, what legal personality it has, how long it has been in business, and, and also characterize it like in a, in a very brief summary to provide a frame for the reader from what is going to come. An example is that you say, okay, uh, we run Macadamia uh, Processing and Trading Company X in country Y and Z, and, and we have an outgrowth scheme or something similar like that. We would also like to have some brief info on the development of the organization and if you are part of a company group, conglomerate holding or something similar. Under one, two, we would like to ensure uh, that the activities that the CFC is going to be financed, so that you're going to ask the CFC to be financed, will be in a CFC member country. Yeah, and, and we want to know more about your physical locations of the business and also of your target markets. And under one, three, we will just ask you to summarize in one or two sentences, also as an introduction, uh, what funding is sought and what, what uh, you are going to use it for. We move to the next slide. You already see chapter two, and that deals with the type of financing that we offer. And uh, here you are basically requested to indicate which type of financing you request. Now, um, some issues that are relevant for all types of financing, we are going to go through them uh, one by one in the following slides. Um, our share or CFC shares of financing does not or should not exceed 50% for any specific undertaking that you request financing from. So that should be, be uh, from other sources that can be other loans, it can be equity or retained earnings. It is important that these assets are shown uh, uh, in the financial statement. If they're not shown, they cannot be accepted as co-financing. You are uh, uh, invited to be creative in that, but uh, it is something that we look at. Um, yeah, the normal terms of the loan uh, is three to five years. And that is also for our short cycled trade finance uh, uh, loans that, that, that we issue, which usually go over 12 months. When we enter uh, a relationship uh, with an investee, we see it as a partnership. That means that we would then provide you with a three to five year uh, master framework agreement uh, in which we will stipulate our willingness to renew the facilities for a couple of years when certain conditions are met. Yeah, This is in order to provide you with some kind of yeah, uh, uh, planning security for the future. Interest rates, hot topic. Yeah, Interest rates are determined by the CFC based on the individual risk profile. And the basis of the interest rate is the government lending rate uh, in the prevailing country in US dollars or in euros, and also for the duration of which the loan is going to be extended. Now, on top of that is going to be a risk markup, and that will take certain, certain things into account, uh, also security, collateral, and the like that could decrease that again. And this is as a rule of thumb, the rates currently go between five and 12%, 12% for being highly risky, excuse me, primary agriculture undertakings. Okay, next slide. Here you see the different loan types that we offer. I start with the one right below. That's the classic term loan. It's a classic product for uh, CAPEX investments. For example, if you want to improve or rehabilitate uh, a palm oil mill or you want to expand a cocoa plantation yeah as i said it's three to five years sometimes we go longer yeah if you are planning to plant perennial tree crops or something like that uh, if it's justified we go longer and sometimes even with a grace period these loans are always tailored and for these loans we do we do uh, undertake a a very thorough uh, due diligence the next one I would touch upon is trade finance. That's right there on top. And that is our most popular product. Yeah, uh, That ranges from pure trade finance against shipment docks when it's onboarded, but it can extend up to the point where a company needs to go out and purchase raw material against the purchase order. The that's the standard structure. 
that we finance against the purchase order and uh, and we have a tripartite agreement with the final off taker somewhere in the US or, or in Europe for direct payment to the CFC. That usually requires very little other securities or collateral. That's the advantage of that. When we do have established some relationship with our investee, uh, we then also look into the option of, of providing some untied working capital facilities. And that's what, what you see in the middle with somewhat less control over the cash. Sometimes we use collateral management agents or, or other collateral management uh, options uh, uh, as a rule of thumb for working capital and for the trade finance is that the longer the cash conversion cycle is, uh, the more likely we will ask for other securities and that would be pledge on inventory receivables or, or guarantees. Example for trade finance, uh, typical is, is uh, if you produce and, sh and uh, trade avocado oil from somewhere in Africa to Europe, you need to go out, buy the avocado, you need to process it, you ship it, and then the retailer in Europe takes another 30, 60 days to pay. Yeah, that is typically also if you we have a mango puree factory in Mali, that's the same thing. You go out, buy mango puree, you process it, you bag it, you ship it, and, and it's 120 days until you get your money. Okay, next slide. What we are mandated to do, but what we rarely or have not done yet is that we we can invest equity into single company companies but we have not done that uh, so far because it just simply absorbs too much of our capacity because when we want to become an equity investor we want to participate in in, in the growth of the business what we occasionally do is invest equity into impact investing funds into other ones uh, if they have interesting propositions but we do that with relatively small ticket sizes one other product product that you see below is that of uh, development impact bond, and that is of high strategic importance to us. Yeah. What is meant here is, in simple terms, is a construct that ensures that the ultimate payer for development impact only pays if and to the amount of impact that is actually being delivered. And in practice, if you happen to be an, an NGO with a great project, for a technical or great idea proposal for a technical assistance project and uh, in agriculture value chains and you have such an ultimate sponsor that would be willing to pay but only after impact has been uh, uh, delivered then we are would be interested in becoming the party that pre-finances your project and takes on your performance risk we do that. We believe that this model has a future in technical assistance because sponsors, uh, there is a tendency that sponsors do no longer want to pay out in advance simply against a claim that will either materialize in development uh, impact or it will not. There's a link on our online application form with a practical example to do more into it. Thank you. Next slide. That is uh, fast track finance. That these uh, that concerns proposals with a smaller ticket size, up to three hundred thousand US dollars, which can be submitted uh, under the fast track procedure. That goes somewhat faster, and there is a uh, an option that uh, this can be done in grant form. But please note that in recent years, the success rate of that has been rather minimal. Yeah, uh, fast track projects must be highly innovative. They must be of strategic importance for the CFC and with substantial additionality. We only do this in rare cases because simply put, the CFC is not rich. So we go to the next slide. We go to the next chapter that will be on management and operations. Now, what do we want to know here? Under 3.1, we want to have answers, we would like to have answers on the key questions. Who are the shareholders uh, of the company? Are there any other ultimate beneficiary owners of the company? And is the company part of a holding or with sister companies? What is the context of that company? And is there a board? Who sits on the board and why? Yeah? And on the management, who are the key persons uh, running that company? What do they bring to the table? Are the skills and the expertise complementary? If you have CVs, attach them to the proposal of the management, other key persons attach them to the proposal, that's very helpful for us. 
Next one under three, two, uh, we would like to understand your current business model. This is where many proponents have difficulties. Put yourself into our shoes. Expect that we know nothing about your company. So start with company X produces and processes Y for export to XYZ countries. It's as simple as that. This will put a frame on. Where do you source from? What processing steps do you do? When, when you have been established, where you are located, what are your target customers, employees, number of employees, sales, production volumes, capacity for production processing, et cetera. The, the, the basic things is what we want to know. And the goal is that the reader has a good high level understanding what you do, how you do it, and, and what size level you do it. In many proposals, we when we read a lot of proposals, we have great difficulties to interpret the business case and whom we are dealing with. It doesn't need to be long, rather not, but concise yeah? and with figures and facts, if possible. In the next slide, and here that's chapter four, market opportunity. That's basically what is around your business and how your business fits in context. In the 4.1, we want to know in what market or industry you are in. Is it a competitive industry with a lot of pressure or are you highly differentiated to an extent that you fill a niche? Uh, do you compete on price? Do you compete on quality? Or do you not compete at all because you have some unique selling proposition which is new on your product? Do you have more than one product? Are you differentiated? What's your main revenue generator? These are the questions that we would like to have answered under four. One. One key information that we also want to know here on uh, where and how do you currently secure your supply? Is it from smallholders? Is it from spot market or with longer term contracts to smallholders? Are you even integrated backwards with your own farms? This is of great interest to us because if you see, if you, you have seen in, in one of the slides before, for us, this, this is really what SMEs do. This is where usually the social impact of our finance to SMEs lie. And then who are your main off takers and how do you market? How do you ship? What's your relationship with your off-takers? Is it long-term or is it at arm's length? What are the barriers to entry to your market? And that, I mean, has an implication on competition. Who are your main competitors? Kindly provide us with the names and if you know the size and power of, that, of those competitors. Also, if there's anything on macro level, that, that uh, is relevant for your business case, put it in there. Are there any legal issues, environmental issues, political, technological issues? Yeah? Does the industry you are in expect any game changer of any, any of these issues? Yeah? Is there going to be a law that's going to prohibit or, or support certain, certain uh, imports, exports? Is there a new technology that makes other technology obsolete in the future? That's what we want to. Under for two, that is then a subchapter where we want to you to express in a few sentences yeah what makes you better than your competitors there you can really show off yeah where do you see your strengths strengths be it in your staff be it in your your efficiency your unique product price leadership customer relationship please let us know and don't be shy when you do that but the same also for weaknesses don't be shy let us know we will ask you in the proposal here under obstacles what is it that you are not good at what are your weakest points where do you see you needs to do better and in this context try to work it out uh, uh, if there is any relationship with your proposal on, on for funding are you going to use the funding for actually uh, working on your weak spots we are interested in that next slide is chapter five and in chapter five, we would, uh, uh, of the proposal, we would like to know more on the proposed operational model. And that means that we are moving towards the future. Yeah. How do you anticipate the future uh, of your business? And under 5.1, uh, based on what you have described earlier in the previous chapter, how your business looks like yeah, right now, please elaborate on your plans, how you see your business is going to look like with CFC funding. Uh, um, how will your business look like when you have invested CFC funding? Where will the effects be? What changes will take place? And will you increase capacity? Will you vertically integrate, diversify your product range, expand into another country or improve product quality? All these kind of things we would like to know there. Under 5.2, same thing. How is going to you, 
related to your customer base. How is that going to change? Will you attract new customers? Will you enter new markets? Will there be new products or will you just deepen the market that you're in? Is there going to be a change in distribution channels from informal to formal markets? Will you export to different countries? Yeah. And one very important question is what currency will you be selling? Number five, three, same thing under supply. Because you invest, you probably your supply is going to change. Yeah. What is it that you require to operate? Yeah. How will you secure assumed higher supply requirements? Will you diversify sourcing? Engage with outgrowers, import, substitute. Yeah. Is this associated with any fresh risk? Uh, how will you structure your supply? Will it be at arm's length? Will it be spot trade? Uh, and that, that's the thing. Or will you have long-term contracts? Will you have an organized supply chain? How is pricing of the supply? Is it going to be local or is it going to be on the world market? All these questions. If you have an idea, put it down there. Under 5.4, we would like to know about any changes in the production and processing process. Uh, um, uh, the thing, our perspective uh, is, uh, 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 is it going to be risky? Are there any risks associated with, with entering a new production process? And on the other side, will you add value? through adding or uh, improving the processing steps? Will you become traceable or will you become organically cert certified? Yeah. Yeah. Will you need more skilled st staff? Yeah. Uh, uh, do you have sufficient electricity or other source of rely reliable energy supply? These are the questions that we would like to have answered here. In the 5.5, five, under that chapter, finally, we would like you to know from you if you plan to apply any innovation alongside your new investment. Will you start to engage with blockchain certification? Will you become traceable? Will you become organic? Will you enter carbon certificate trading, use renewable energy, or, 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 or even if you are going to be the first one that is going to process a commodity in a country like growing peanuts in Zambia, something like that. So you are starting a new industry, also very interesting for us. Okay, before I now uh, again hand over to uh, Andre, uh, who will lead you through the development impact phase, let me briefly summarize. Yeah, uh, uh, Generally, in, in the proposal, be as concise as possible and try to underline your information with quantitative figures wherever you have them available. For yields, production level, staff number, that's the, that, that makes it more graspable for us. Try to avoid fogging and be unclear and, and, and it only makes reading difficult and do not fall for information dumping we have to read a lot of proposals so try to be concise we are fully aware that no business in this world is perfect yeah do not be afraid of self-highlighting your deficiencies and the possible risks that your business is exposed to so at proposal sta stage for us we need to get a clear high level picture on your business and to see if the, your business can be sustainable. And this is the ba basis for any development impact, which then becomes sustainable impact. Now back over to you, Andre, uh, uh, to inform on the development impact on the temporary. Thank you very much, uh, Nikolaus. And <clears throat> Uh, do do have a look at the chat box because there was one question where I believe you might answer in the meantime. Uh, so uh, section six of the application form concerns the development impact. And I'm not going to spend much time on this, but this is a very important and very significant section of the application. You need to demonstrate that the uh, investment proposal can qualify as an impact investment to be eligible for financing by the CFC. Now, uh, section six is organized to show different aspects of impact. So uh, 6.2 basically asks you to describe how the investment proposal will impact in the context of sustainable development goals. These are 17 UN sustainable development goals you will see the necessary references in the application form. You can also find it on the UN website. This is widely known. So we are looking for projects that make clear impact that can be understood in the context of UN Sustainable Development Goals. 
Under section 6.3, we ask you to characterize the end beneficiary. So if an investment proposal is made with an objective of delivering a certain impact, we want to understand who is going to be the main beneficiary of this impact. So some suggestions are indicated there in the text that we would like to look at the poverty profile of the beneficiary. We would like to look at the income and how the income inequality is, is seen in, in the context of a particular investment proposal. It would be useful. It is useful to have the assessment of the average national products or average uh, product per person in the target region of the project and also any other income data that will help us to understand how the investment proposal will help to alleviate poverty. The final section of the impact uh, part concerns uh, social and environmental risks. The CFC has the social and environmental risk management system that will apply to every project receiving the CFC financing. And we will try to use this, the information in this section to understand that the investment proposal will be able to manage social and environmental risks connected to the proposed type of investment operations by the CFC. So you need to clearly explain how, uh, where do risks come from and how the proposed investment is going to manage those risks so that we can uh, convince ourselves that the project can manage and can meet the requirements of social and environmental risk management system of the CFC. Uh, diving a bit into the impact indicators. So when you are characterizing section 6.2, uh, the impact on sustainable development goals, uh, it is it is a complicated issue. So to make it slightly more uh, suitable and slightly more manageable, the CFC relies on the system of impact indicators developed by the Global Impact Investment Network. And the system of indicators is called IRIS Plus. You can see the uh, internet reference to the website where you can find detailed explanation how to assess the impact in standardized indicators that the CFC can use and that the CFC can use to compare the performance of different projects and to compare the performance not only of the CFC projects, but also of projects funded by other development organizations using the IRIS Plus system. In the Excel template that is downloadable together with the application, you can find some suggestions on impact indicators. So please choose the most suitable metrics for your application and uh, please try to re reflect the best way possible how your investment proposal will be able to measure its impact within the context of sustainable development goals using the IRIS Plus metrics. So this is all I was going to say about impact. And the time is running very quickly. I need to hand over back to Nikolaus to conclude the application process. Thank you. Thanks, Andre. So we then go to chapter seven. That's the next slide. So that means that alongside your narrative business case, we uh, also would like to assess the financial strength and, and performance of your business, basically let numbers tell the same story uh, and we do that in chapter seven in principle we ask you to fill in two excel sheet templates which can be found on our website uh, uh, with the application uh, and i will show them also in the next uh, two slides one is the balance sheet and the other one is a profit and loss statement and we require you to fill in the factual past figures of the last three years and then make a forecast for the next couple of years in the same table um, we have to look at these figures in a structured manner and grasp the general notion of those figures, uh, uh, of those tables very quickly. And that is why they are pre-structured. And that is why we kindly ask you not to amend the template. Rather, amend your figures. Try to make your figures fit into that structure so we get a picture. 
And when you do that, try to ensure that we really get a true and fair view on your financials. It will save us a lot of work if we do not have to find out at a later stage that some figures do not match with audited financial statements, which will be any, uh, analyzed anyhow somewhat later. Again, here we know that, that there's hardly any business that comes with a shiny, super solid balance sheet, regular high net profits and, and tons of free cash. Yeah, And, and the proposal under chapter 7.1, you have the chance of commenting on the tables and providing some insights and explanations on the trends that can be observed or, or any up and downward figures, any hiccups, uh, 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 you have the chance there to explain what kind of extraordinary event happened and the like. Uh, for the projections in chapter 7.2, also provi provide us with your main ass assumptions. Yeah, If your project has a hockey stick growth, we obviously want to know on what basis you project that. Yeah, uh, Let us know on your assumed prices, volumes, various products sold, uh, basically on which you base your financial projections on. So we know the assumptions. Under 7.3, we would like to know your existing finance providers, what type of funding you have received to them and the amount. And we would also like to learn why you turn to the CFC for financing. What is our additionality? Be it that you do not find any additional finance per se, that the interest rates uh, are prohibitive or, or that the suitable loan product in your area is simply not available. And finally, under Chapter 7.4, we'll ask you to list the main risks that you are facing and that you might face when you grow with CFC financing. Again, be open and transparent. There's no business in this world without any risk. And we know that anything, especially related to agriculture is very risky. So whatever you write there, we, we can take it. Trust me. Um, yeah, on the next slide, you see uh, the profit and loss account. We move to the next slide. Yeah, there should be no surprises here. On the on the left hand side, you see the historic part. On the right hand side, then you see the future part that we ask you to to fill in. The next slide would then be the balance sheet. Same thing. We move to the next. Yeah, also no surprises there. What you're supposed to fill in, and uh, historic and future. And please do not tamper with these sheets. Okay, then we move to the next slide and the next chapter. Yeah, that would already be a bit of a wrap up of what we ask you to uh, provide as supporting documents. What is basically mandatory required is that you submit your audited financial statements of the last three years. If you only have two, be it, but really we want three. Yeah. The financial projections, what I've just shown, PL balance sheet, and if you do have it at hand, cash flow statement, impact indicators, as Andre has put it also there. And then we would like to see the company registration documents and also a legal ownership chart, an organigram with all entities, um, if that is required. Under A2, basically, we recommend if you have a business plan, put it there. If you have management organization chart, put it there. Uh, if you have CVs, put it, yeah. Um, anything, if you have a, a, a pitch deck, we would like to know about it. Anything that you deem relevant for us to get a better view on your company, uh, just add it, yeah. Thank you. Chapter nine, that would be the next slide. Again, that's just uh, for formality. We want to have a few formal information, including your website, if you have one in physical address. And in chapter 10, we would like to take you to take off a few things, affirmations. Uh, uh, that would be the next slide. And I would like to draw your attention to the last one. If, if there is any sensitive information that you do not want uh, to be disclosed within the consultative committee or the governing bodies of the CFC, internally in the CFC, Clyde, uh, kindly indicate that. Yes. Yeah, that already well, that now brings us to the end of, of that presentation. And I hand over to Andre. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Nikolaus. And uh, in the meantime, I was reviewing the questions in the chat box. And there's a couple of questions that I would like to address to Nikolaus, uh, namely uh, that uh, 
uh, expanding the farm where significant amounts have been invested already, will the CFC still be able to finance only 50%? And the short answer is that co-financing of a project needs to be seen on the balance sheet for us to recognize that it exists. If it will be visible on the balance sheet as your past investments, then we can uh, talk about it. And I wouldn't want to go into details without seeing the financial projections of the project from that moment on. Uh, next, there's a question on the possibility of financing uh, distribution trucks. And this is, again, this is a question that we will not be able to answer without seeing the proposal because it needs to be part of a sustainable operational model that can justify this CAPEX investment. Uh, how will you establish SME member-based organization financial performance that provide technical assistance to its members? And uh, if we cannot establish financial performance, that means we cannot confirm the financial sustainability of the project. And that means that this is probably not something that the CFC can finance. Again, I cannot be more detailed on this without seeing the details. Uh, Business uh, established in 2019 cannot fit the template. Uh, we require the track records of at least three years going back to confirm that the, the operation is uh, viable. The presentation is going to be shared. The list of countries eligible, I can see that my colleagues have already inserted it. Uh, formal family business uh, financed under C the CFC scheme. It is perfectly feasible. Uh, we do have some. And this, again, uh, we need to have a legal person behind investment proposal that can take financial obligations in front of the CFC to be able to take the money, to undertake the operation, and to return the recoverable financing to the CFC. So uh, thank you very much. With that, Nicholas, I don't know if you have, want to supplement anything. It's fine. Thanks. You've answered. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. Then uh, we are basically three minutes over time. We can take five more minutes if there is one or more real questions. Uh, the microphone is open, but if you do take the microphone, please uh, ask questions and not make statements because we don't really have the time for that. You can write to us in greater detail on the email address on the slide. Thank you. Uh, mine is a quick one. I just want to know, well, I'm Rugola asking from Tanzania. I just want to know if uh, supply to the local market is allowed in the application. Thank you. Yeah, and Nicholas, we I think we have a full. Yeah, um, it, it usually is very is very difficult because we extend loans in in U.S. dollars or euros, and uh, the, the currency risk is also very high for, for the borrower. And and uh, usually we 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 refrain from that. If you are have a compelling case where you can hedge currency risk and foreign exchange risk, uh, then we would be willing to look at it. But in, in, in uh, yeah, as a matter of principle, it, it's very difficult. Yes, hello. Um, I'm called Martin from South Sudan. Um, I've gone through the member countries list. I have not seen South Sudan in the list. So I don't know whether it is being listed under Sudan, but now South Sudan is independent. Are we eligible to apply? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you very much for this question. We would uh, we very much like to welcome South Sudan as a member country of the Common Fund for Commodities, but at this stage, South Sudan is not a member country of the CAC. Therefore, uh, we cannot consider proposals operating in South Sudan. But uh, you're welcome to write to us with a question of uh, how, of what are the steps for South Sudan to become a member of the CFC. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I can see a uh, hand up. 
by uh, Venia Makasa, and I would like to make this the final question because I believe my colleagues have uh, pressing engagements uh, beyond the time. So please, uh, Mr. Uh, Venia Makasa. Okay, thank you so much. I really just wanted to find out if uh, uh, the proposal Mm, we seem to have lost the sound. We cannot hear you. Okay, are you able to get me now? Yes, we can. All right, so my question was, is there any budget ceiling in terms of making proposals uh, to the same? Is there a budget ceiling that you can't cross over or it depends on what activities or proposals that you've got in store or want to propose? Thank you. Yeah. Nicolas, you wanna? Well, we, we start with very low, yeah, with 50 to 300,000 under the fast track procedures. And then it goes up to usually 1.5 million. In exceptional cases, we go to 2 million US dollars. Thank you very much. And the real last question uh, from uh, Baptiste Young. Yes, yes, uh, evening. I'm called Baptiste Young from South Sudan. I'm really uh, feeling good with this program, but unfortunately I've just heard that South Sudan is not considered because it's not one of the member states, but how some of us are used as traveling to do something. How can we really benefit from this program? And it's like some of us, like me personally, our group is doing production of banana, but now we are going to miss this point, which is contributing to the sustainable development goal also. I don't know why is our position in this matter. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. So I would give the same uh, reply as before. Uh, we would like to welcome South Sudan as a member of the Common Fund for Commodities. To find out the detail, uh, please uh, contact us. It is a government. Uh, so uh, only the government of South Sudan can become a member of the CFC. And that means that the government official from South Sudan needs to write to the managing director of the Common Fund for Commodities. The address is on the screen, uh, requesting information on becoming a member of the CFC. And we can take it from there. Uh, membership, again, the CFC is a UN organization, so membership will go through the United Nations, so it has to be taken up by the government. Thank you very much. So, uh, Nicholas, I understand that your time is out. So, I see two more questions, uh, but I believe we will not be able to take this in the conversation now. Uh, please do feel free to send those questions by email to the address shown on the screen. And uh, unfortunately, I will have to call an end to this current call for, uh, call for proposals webinar. Uh, thank you very much for joining. Thank you very much for attending. And most of all, thank you very much for the questions. Our line of communication is open. Please feel free to email us with the questions regarding the for commodities or regarding the open call for proposals. I hope uh, this uh, presentation was useful. I thank you once again, and I wish you a very nice afternoon. Thank you very much. This webinar uh, is concluded. It, it is safe now to discuss.